Hello everyone, it is New Year's Eve and I just wanted to pop on and bring an encouraging word for you all before we go into the new year. So I'm the type of person that just gets super reflective and I like to think about the year as it's coming to an end and think about what all happened and how I grew and what all the Lord did in my life during this past year. And so today I'm actually going to start in the book of Daniel chapter three, if you want to follow along. Um, and so in this chapter, King Nebuchadnezzar builds this huge idol and he asks everyone in town to bow down to it. And the only people that refuse to bow down are Daniel and his three friends. Um, and so King Nebuchadnezzar says that they will be thrown into a fiery furnace for refusing to bow down to this idol. In Daniel chapter 3, starting in verse 15, the king tells Daniel and his friends, But if you do not worship, you shall immediately be cast into a burning, fiery furnace. And who is the God who will deliver you out of my hands? And so then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If this be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. But if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. I want to just start by pointing out in verse 17, they say, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the fiery furnace. Look at that picture of faith. They are not wavering. They are standing firm in their belief that their God, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the fiery furnace. I know this year and the past couple years have been really, really hard for people, um, in terms of finding jobs and getting paid well and just with inflation and all the rising prices and i know that all of you have had to walk through some type of fiery furnace and i know for me in my life i definitely had to walk through a ton of fiery furnaces when i first became a believer and announced my faith to my family um so i just want to encourage you to have Faith, if you are going through a really tough challenge right now, have faith because the God that we serve is able to deliver you. And here's the thing. God does not say that if you walk with him, you will avoid all challenges, that you will avoid all hardships and tough situations and circumstances. He does not promise that. He does not promise that those things can be avoided, but he does promise that he will be the one to walk through it with us. And when we go through that fire, it is refining. Moving on to verse 18, um, they say, But if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. And so I really want you to think about the situation here. They are being told that if they do not bow down to this idol, to this golden image that has been constructed, if they don't bow down and worship it, they will be thrown into a fiery furnace. They will certainly die. They will certainly be killed. And so not only do they say our God will deliver us, but then they say, even if our God does not deliver us, we refuse to bow down. And so I want you to think about and this is something I've been thinking about lately as I've been trekking through this book, is any area in my life that I have been compromising my faith. And so compromising doesn't just look like bowing down to an idol, obviously, but it can look like staying silent. It can look like not voicing your opinion or um, being in tough situations where you kind of have to shove your faith down and keep it quiet a little bit instead of stepping out and doing what you know is right. And so those are things I will really be working on in the new year. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego get thrown into the fiery furnace. And then in verse 24, it says, Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished and rose up in haste. He declared to his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound into the fire? They answered and said to the king, True, O king. He answered and said, but I see four men unbound 
walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt. And the appearance of the fourth is like a son of the gods. They had been thrown into the fiery furnace. They were left to die. And there's so much in this verse. I have it underlined down here just because there's so much to unpack. The four men, there's four of them in there. There's the three that were thrown in and then the Lord. The Lord joined them in the fire. That is what I believe. I believe that Jesus was fully in that fire with them. He was walking it out with them. And that's the other part of it is that he says, I see four men unbound walking in the midst of the fire. They are walking in the fire. They are not being consumed by the flames. They are not being burnt up. They're walking in the midst of the fire and they are not hurt. They are not hurt. And so that is the picture that God gives us when we walk out this life with him. When we do it with him and we go through these tough circumstances and trials and these flames that are really consuming and that they could destroy us if we were not walking with the Lord, but he is in the flames with us. He is walking it out with us. And so if you're going through something really tough and really hard and you feel like these flames are consuming you, I promise you that if you just walk it out with the Lord, if you invite him into your situation and if you let him take the lead, if you let him reign, you're not going to get hurt. He's going to protect you. He's going to be there with you and you are not going to go through this alone. And then moving on to verse 27, the back half says, the fire had not had any power over the bodies of those men. The hair of their heads was not singed, their cloaks were not harmed, and no smell of fire had come upon them. They were in the flames, they were in the fiery furnace, and they were not burned, they were not hurt, there was no smoke smell on them. They were completely and totally in the Savior Savior's care. They were totally protected, and he kept them safe. One of my biggest idols, something that I deeply struggled with, um, both before I accepted Christ as Lord and after I started walking out life with him, he really revealed to me that this was a stronghold um, and even a source of idolatry was people pleasing. And that really came in the form of trying to make my family happy, trying to please them with my life and my life choices. And for so long, I kept my faith hidden. Um, to make them happy and to just not rock the boat, to not cause any sort of trouble, just to stay quiet. And it was really consuming me. And so a verse that really helped me was in Galatians chapter one, verse 10. And it says, for am I now seeking the approval of man or of God? Or am I trying to please man? If I were still trying to please man, I would not be a servant of Christ. You can't do both. You cannot please people and please God. You have to choose one or the other. You can't have both. And that goes with any other thing that you're doing. You cannot focus all of your attentions on and worship people or money or alcohol or drugs or your job or your family or your friends and worship God. You can't have both. He's got to come first. And that's not saying that all of those things have to be cut out completely. You just have to reprioritize where those things are in your life. I just want to step up to the stage and testify just a little bit to God's goodness. And I just want to say that there has been a lot, a lot of brokenness in my life in the past couple years. I'm not sure if I've shared on this channel, but my family is not coming to my wedding. They're not involved in any way. They're not supportive of my marriage. Um, I will be moving soon, and there's so many emotions that come with that. I'm very excited. Excitement is the first emotion with that, but it is really heartbreaking, the situation that um, my family is in right now, and just, yeah, there's a ton of stuff in my personal life, and over the past couple of years, there's been so many layers of brokenness. But let me tell you, just like Daniel and his friends in that fiery furnace, when you go through the fire, when you go through those challenges and those really tough situations and circumstances in which there seems like there's no hope, there seems like there is no way that I will be delivered from this. There's just, there's no way out. These flames are consuming. 
I promise you that that fire, God will use that fire to refine you, to shape your character, to grow your faith, because that is exactly what he's done in me. And just looking back and seeing all the growth that has happened in the past year, in the past year alone, I feel like there's just been so much. And at the end of 2021, God planted seeds in my heart about boundaries. There's a really good verse, I think in the book of Romans. Let me try to find it. Okay, I got it. Romans chapter 12, verse 18. Actually, let's start in verse 17. Paul says, Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. And so this was a verse he planted in my heart. And I was also reading a really great book on boundaries by Dr. Henry, Henry Cloud. Um, and just this part that says, if possible, if it's even possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. That means, and God has really, really hammered this into my life and into my brain and my heart this whole year. Um, and dealing with some of the family situation stuff I'm going through, but um, you cannot control other people. You are not responsible for other people. You are not responsible for the words they say about you, for the hurt that they throw at you, for their feelings and their emotions. And um, honestly, if you are doing the best you can with a situation, if you are doing as much as you can, as far as it depends on you, if you are doing your part that is all God asks. He does not ask you to um, try and try and try to piece everything together and to be responsible for everyone to just carry that load on your shoulders. That's not what he wants. He says, if it's possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. And so that's also something that I just really, really learned this year. And honestly, in 2021, I carried just, I don't even know how to describe it, so much just tons and tons and tons and tons of shame and guilt over not even my decisions, but over what all my family members were feeling about my faith. Um, I carried that with me. I carried that burden with me and I really felt responsible for how upset and how angry and how hurt some of them were. Um, but all you can do is what you can do. And as long as you are making an effort, as long as you are trying, if possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. And God is saying right there, sometimes it's not possible. Sometimes it's not possible to live peaceably with all. And in that situation, you just do what you can. I will say that God is a God of redemption. Jesus brings redemption. He brings new life. He brings fresh starts and new beginnings and all the beautiful, wonderful things that only he can do. Um, but honestly, sometimes if he's just delivered you out of something, there is a very strong temptation to go back, to backtrack, because that area that he's delivered you out of is comfortable. You're used to it. Your flesh really likes it. I like to make other people happy. I like to give and give and give and give myself to where I'm just totally people pleased out and that's not what, that's not the life that God is calling us to. And he says in the book of Galatians chapter five, verse one, for freedom, for freedom, Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. And this is something we saw. This is Galatians, this is New Testament, but this is the same exact idea and picture that we saw in the book of Daniel when his friends and him refused to submit that yoke of slavery. They refused to bow down to that idol. They refused to do what everyone else was doing. They refused to follow the world. They had to follow God. It was a decision that they made. They chose to stand firm in their faith and say, our God will deliver us. And even if he doesn't, we are not going to bow down to your idols. If this year was extremely hard for you, if you just had a really, really hard, heavy year full of brokenness, um, I just want to say that our hope is in the Lord and I have lived it. I have seen it. I know it to be true that he does bring beauty from ashes. He does take the most broken, sharp, 
jagged pieces and he puts them together in such a beautiful new way to where no it's not the same exact thing as what was broken right like think about a vase if you accidentally break a vase and you've got pieces and shards and you know glass chunks everywhere what god does is he takes those broken chunks he takes those pieces and he puts them together in such a new beautiful way that no one even thought was possible they thought the vase was destroyed but now it's no longer a vase it's something even better it's something more beautiful it's something that shows his craftsmanship and his um just the way that he works and that is what he has done in my life and I promise that if you trust him and if you put your faith in him he will do amazing beautiful wonderful things